get the red carpets out, get the statues ready. Manchester United finally win a game in Europe after more than a year. That is insane. Manchester United 2, Pauk nil. I'm going to go through my match reaction. The important thing on here, though, let me know in the comments what you think, what you thought of the game. Let me know if you agree. Let me know if you disagree. It's all about yourselves. So get involved in the comments. Let me know what you felt about after the uh, the match last night. Welcome to Man United Review. My name's Jamie. Before we get into it, though, please smash a like on the video. And let's go through my match reaction. So, um, you know, I always start with the team selection. Bit of rotation in defense. No, no dramas with that. You know, they're not the... It's not like we were playing prime... Prime Real Madrid last night, so Lindelof, Johnny Evans come in. Um, no, no issues with that. Someone explain to me in the comments, please, why we keep switching Masrawi and Dallow from left back to right back. Like, I don't understand the need to keep constantly changing them. You know, from one side or the other, Masrawi just does well either way. So just pick which side you want Masrawi to play, and pick them which side Dallow. Dallow for me personally is better at right back than he is at left back. So can we not just please play Masrawi at left back and Dallow at right back? Why do we need to keep swapping them around? The only reason or thing that I can think of is because of it's to do with, you know, Masrawi does have a good relationship or seems to have a good relationship with Ahmad, but surely like these are professional players, surely they can play together you know, with, with other players in the team, unless they can't, and that's part of the problem because we do look like strangers on the pitch sometimes together. But that's the only the only excuse I can offer. Can, but that's just it's just odd to me that we keep swapping them all the time. That's why he's been doing really well at left back. Dallow's been doing okay at right back, not outstanding, but he's better at right back than he is at left back. Yet they switch it again. I don't understand. Don't understand it personally. Um, that's the only kind of gripe that I had. Um, and then obviously Ahmad Diallo starts because Rashford gets a knock. Who knows whether he would have started Ahmad if Rashford hadn't had a knock, but thank God he did because it ended up being a blessing in disguise. I'll speak more about Ahmad Diallo and his performance in a bit. But apart from that, the team's kind of picking itself, isn't it? We don't really have any options in midfield to rotate with the injuries we've got at the moment. And then it's a toss-up between Garnacho and Rashford. Obviously, Rashford had a knock, so um, you go with Garnacho, and it is what it is in terms of the team selection. But the only odd th thing for me is I don't understand why we keep swapping Dallo and Masrawi at fullback. It, like someone explained that to me in the comments because I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Um, and then first half was just... Just the same old, wasn't it? There wasn't really anything changed. It was pretty boring. Um, you know, no real excitement, poor decision-making, lacked quality again still, like our final ball was was just not quite there. I did think we were trying, you know, Garnacho was trying to, to play people in a lot more and was a lot less selfish, but his quality and pass wasn't quite up to it. Um, you know, it was just a very limp effort, I thought, first half. we, we Again, our forwards just kind of... You know, they're just not not clicking, is it? It's just not clicking, not working. Um, you know, we had one big chance in the first half, four shots. Our XG was 0 0.35, which summed up the first half again. Um, just looks like, again, our forwards have never played together before, passing the areas that they think somebody should be going, but then they've stopped running. So then you're giving the ball away. And it was just a very dull first half. There wasn't really much going on. A um, couple of balls into the box. Gone actually had a couple of crosses. Um, you know, I'm a, a good ball into the box. and But nothing really of substance to kind of get your teeth into in the first half. It was pretty much just standard Man United at the moment. Um, second half, I felt we were a little bit better. Had a little bit more energy and attack. Obviously, we scored the goal there. Lovely header from Ahmad. Lovely ball in from Bruno. I'll speak about him in a second. Um, you know, but Ahmad had a really, really strong performance in my opinion, and it was almost like did it like he came on with a bit of a point to prove. Um, you know, but weirdly, not his best performance on the ball as well. If you're a subscriber and you've watched any of my previous videos, I always kind of rate Ahmad because he keeps the ball and he progresses the ball forward as well. But he actually only had 63% pass accuracy yesterday, which is really poor for Ahmad. Um, really low. Normally, he's averaging the high 80s, even sometimes into the 90s so far this season. Um, but whether he's been told to take a few more risks or um, because he's not had any match rhythm, because he's not been playing for the last few weeks, do you know what I mean? It is isn't it just absolutely insane that, you know, Ahmed started the season really well, I thought was our best winger, and then Ten Hag decided to not play him, but then not just not play him, bring Anthony on 
as a substitute appearances for the couple of games before he was sacked as well. And ultimately that kind, I'm not saying that Ahmed would have saved him his job, but you know, Anthony's done nothing for United since he, since like after his first few games and yet Ahmed's actually doing all right. Like that's just insane to me. The, the, the decision-making regarding Ahmed Diallo, um, but yeah, and you know, clearly our best players got the, had the work rate, and that second goal just kind of summed up the the fact that I do think he had a bit of a point to prove. I mean, w- w- um, showed strength, determination, you know, really good. Got a bit of luck with the deflection, but sometimes you earn your luck, and deserved it. I was really happy for him. Um, but other than that, again, there wasn't any really significant difference in the second half. There was a few kind of moments. Um, you know, Hoyland only had 16 touches of the ball or game. You can let me know in the comments who you think is at fault for that. Is it is it his positioning? Is it his movement? Or is it the team not passing him the ball? Like, I, I, I kind of think we're passing it to areas where he's got his back to goal and he's surrounded by two or three defenders a lot. And I'm like, come on. Can we not like passing the ball, like play to his strength a little bit more? But then again, I don't think his movement was particularly great. He had a very poor game, I thought. Um last night and then we made the substitutions and the substitutions kind of killed our momentum as well i thought losing ugarte and Br- he wasn't necessarily having the best game but he just seems to be one of those players you know that makes other players around him be able to play because they've got that insurance that he is there to kind of cover them um and he, he do you know i mean he, he covers the ground really well in midfield and then when we when he went off Pauk actually came into the game for like a 10 minute period and and we were lucky not to concede. They had a really good chance in front of goal. Andrea Onana, shout out to him, made a fantastic save um, and then read that one. It wasn't necessarily the greatest of shots, but made the save. I thought Onana had, a, had another good performance actually. Um, and again, almost kind of kept us in the game because that could have been 1-1 and then who knows with this United team what would have happened, would have happened from there. Um you know, I thought Casemiro was playing well alongside Ugarte. Bruno, seven key passes um, and an assist. Was a little bit frustrating at time, but was, was you know, his, his pass accuracy was actually really high for for Bruno. Garnacho, lively, unlucky with some, some cutbacks, was was being less selfish on the ball, um, which was good. Shout out to Lindelof and Johnny Evans as well. I thought they did okay. Masraoui was his usual class self. I thought Dallow had a poor game. Um you know, I don't think he's, I don't think he's as good at left back as he is at right back, and that's why the kind of decision to play him on the flank, or swap the flanks with Masrawi just seems a little bit bizarre. But overall, it was just, you know, it was one of those. Like I think Ahmed, you know, that second goal was all done by himself. Again, there wasn't really any team play or patterns of play or anything that kind of suggested that we were going to carve them open all the time when we were going forward, we just look very limp again going forward. Like the, the problems are there to see for United, aren't they? In the, in the kind of forward and the goal scoring areas. That's why we're, you know, one of the worst teams in the Premier League at scoring goals and converting chances because we're just, we're just looking apt in, in, in that area of the pitch. Um, In terms of Rude, you know, he's not here to change the system massively. He's not here to upset the team or the apple cart or the squad. You know, that's Amram's job after this weekend. We've got 90 minutes left against Leicester and then, and then you know, Ruben Amram's coming in. Um, so Rude's just here to try and get results until, you know, until that kind of happens. He's here to steady the ship, not make wholesale changes. He doesn't have time to completely change things. So I think he's doing the right thing, sticking with it, making a few little tweaks. Do you know what I mean? Um, but, you know, two wins and a draw, not bad so far as an interim for, for Rude. It's important we get the results and don't kind of leave it in a where we're in a worse position when Amarim comes in. So hopefully he can continue that at the weekend and we can get the points against Leicester because that's important. Um, performance could be better though. But again, it's not going to change overnight. It's not going to change overnight, even when Ruben Amarim comes in as well. It is going to take time. Um, but, you know, overall, in summary, boring first half, I thought. Um, got the goal in the second half, sat back for a period. We're a little bit fortunate i felt for that 10 15 minute spell after we made all the substitutions and then ahmed makes the second goal by himself our xg was only 0.79 percent in the second half so 1.14 overall only two big chances created against pauk at old trafford which kind of sums up where united are at the moment but it was a win it's our first win in the europa league again it's one of these where it's a good result 
a pretty average performance, I would say. Nothing particularly fancy, but Ahmed Diallo, definitely a point to prove, um, came on. I thought he did really well. Obviously, he took his goals really well. But in a weird way, I also think that he made a few a few kind of errors, which is abnormal to Ahmed. But, you know, I'm not going to criticise somebody that's just won us the game of football. But, um, but yeah, just more of the same. I felt there's not really much else to, to kind of go through. Um, so let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you agree. Let me know if you disagree. Let me know what you thought about Ahmed Diallo. Smash a like on the video if you thought he was your man of the match. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. See you in the next one.